We want to factor this polynomial here. Notice that this degree 3 polynomial, let's assume is f, f, variable x, y, z, and we try to factor this. Now, in this case, it turns out that x plus y plus z is a factor of f. Now, you may ask, what is the intuition in figuring that out? That may be the topic for another day. Today, let's assume that is the case. So what does it mean f plus y plus z is a factor? So we need to show that if this equal to 0, then f is 0. Then we know that x plus y plus z is going to be a factor of f. Now in this case, z would be elective x plus y. So we're going to use the cubic formula here, right? So x plus y cubed is going to be equal x cubed plus y cube plus 3x square y plus 3xy square. That's just the formula here. Notice that in most cases you can rewrite this as 3x plus y times xy, right? So it's going to be 3xy times x plus y. Okay, for these two terms here. Okay, so we're going to move everything on the right hand side to the to the left of the equation. So what do we get is z cubed plus x cubed plus y cubed plus. Now this term here, since x plus y got negative z, so that's going to be plus 3xy negative z. And this whole thing is 0. Notice that the left hand side is nothing but f. All right, so f x y z equal 0 because this is just equal to that, right? Now, from here, we can conclude this. So, which means x plus y plus z is a factor. In other words, what we know is that f x y z is going to be x plus y plus z times another polynomial g of x y z. All right. How do we find g? Now, we're going to look at this polynomial here, this one. Notice that is each term is like degree 3, including this one. Not only that, another important property is that you can swap x, y, or y, z, or, or x, z, and the polynomial remains the same. Now we call this is cyclic, you know, symmetric. So in other words, f, let's figure out what's the property of f, okay? So each term, degree 3, And the whole polynomial is cyclic, symmetric. Now, you can say the same thing for this single term of degree 1. Each term is degree 1 and is cyclic, symmetric. You can swap xy or yz or xz. Remain the same. So we claim that the polynomial g must have the same property except that each term is going to have a degree 2, right? Because this is a product. And then it's also cyclic symmetric. What does that mean? It means if G, if G has a term, for example, x squared with some coefficient, then it must also contain, you know, y squared and z square because the polynomial must be cyclic symmetric okay now of course for degree 2 there is another case for degree 2 right you could have x y with some other coefficient but using the same argument it must also contain b y z and b x z the coefficient has to be the same so each term each term is homogeneous in degree 2 Okay, in other words, what we can do 
is we can rewrite this yeah if we know g must have this kind of structure right so let's do that so let's write f x y z which is this term here right We say that is equal x plus y plus z times g, but g has a structure that is a x square plus y square plus z square and b x y plus y z plus z x. Now we need to figure out what is a, what is b, right? So let's do that. First, observe that the leading coefficient here is 1, right? And so we claim that a has to be 1 because this is a x squared times x. That's going to be the resulting term for degree 3, right? So we claim that a has to be 1. So in which case, we can just cross out. This is going to be 1. How about b? We couldn't figure it out. Let's just do the algebra here. So right hand side is going to be you're expanding this this term here. Yeah. So you're going to have uh, the cubic term and the cross terms, right? So let's do that. So it's going to be x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed. And then you have cross terms that is you have x y square and x z square and you plus y x square plus y z square and you have z x square and z y square that's good now the other thing is you have this term times b so we have a b here plus b times first of all when you notice that this x we're gonna do x times the whole thing right plus y times the whole thing and so let's do that so when x times this, you have x square y plus x y z plus z x square plus and and then now you have y times the whole thing here. What do we get is x y square plus y square z plus x y z, and you have z right. So z here, the same thing here. So x y z plus y z square plus z square x okay now compare the left and right hand side right left hand side is simpler we have many terms here let's figure out this coefficient here we have x y z x y z we have x y z we have three of them and b so in order to match up b has to be negative one now would that work okay where other terms vanish. Okay, so how about this term where vanish? Let's figure it out x if if this is negative one, let's change that. So this is gonna be negative one, right? Minus. Okay, here we do have x y square and cancels. X z square here, x z square and x z square cancel. How about x square y? x square y cancels. How about y z square? y z square cancels. How about z x square? z x square cancels. How about z y square? z y square? z y square cancels. What is left? Okay, so this term left and the three of them here which match up to the left hand side. So in another words, what we have just found is a is 1, so get rid of this. B is negative 1, so let's get rid of that. That will be minus. Okay, so look at this term here, right? This term. Now you can actually compete the square. Okay, what you have is this is, this is a very common form here. You know, what some of you may realize this can be rewritten. Okay, let's rewrite that. So let's copy the whole thing here. 
That's the main conclusion for today. Let's duplicate that. So what we can do is 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 to rewrite this. Okay. So we're gonna rewrite this term here. Okay. So that's equal x plus y plus z, and this is actually nothing but one half of complete the square here x minus y square plus y minus z square plus z minus x square of course if for the real numbers it's going to be non-negative okay so a byproduct of this factorization of the polynomial f yeah is that if x y z are non-negative since this term is non-negative, non-negative, the so whole thing is non-negative. In another words, x cubed plus y cubed plus z cubed, the sum is greater or equal to three times the product. Now, aha, this is actually the AM, GM inequality for three variables. Let's review that. Now, notice that for two variables, that's the equation. Right, so not this is not a b, this is x y. Okay, x y are long negative, of course. Now, for three variables, we have this inequality this a m, this is g m. Okay, so how the two are related here? Now, they're actually the same thing, yeah. If you couldn't figure that out, let's do the variable substitution here. Let's assume this is u, this is v, this is w, right? So then what do you have? You can rewrite this equation here, this equation, with this variable substitution here. You know, this is u equals this. So what you get is rewrite it as u plus v plus w on the left hand side. Right hand side is going to be three times what is x? x is cube root of u and y is v and that is w, right? And of course, you divide 3 on both sides. We get the inequality standard form here, all right? So we start by factoring this polynomial here. And we get this factor here, x y plus x plus y plus z. There's a key, and then this is related to for the three variables a m g m inequality. All right. So hope you enjoy the video. Please like and share and subscribe to the channel.